Welcome to the show. This is a new show called Here, There, and Everywhere with Jay Hare. We're glad you tuned in because we've got something special for you in this new series. We're a show that's going to take you behind the scenes, talk to people that you haven't met, Oh, and then we're going to show you some places you may have visited, but we're going to look at it from a little different angle. I think you're going to really enjoy this show, and we hope you'll tune in regularly. I'm going to give you some information across the bottom of the screen on how to contact us, because we do want to hear from you. So sit back and enjoy. Uh, we're going to bring up the first show of Here, There, and Everywhere with Jay Hare. This is called the filming of the Titanic from the bottom up. Now, why are we saying from the bottom up? It's a double entendre for sure. We all know the Titanic sank. But what we're going to be doing is talking to an actor, a background actor who was a featured player in the filming of the Titanic. He was one of the passengers, by the way, who survived. He literally did survive. And he's gonna tell us about that. Now, this friend of mine who's with me on this show his name is Terrence Baxter, so I'm going to bring him on right now and introduce you to him. Good oh, to see you, buddy. Nice to see you, too. Well, this audience out here is going to enjoy what you have to show them, and I know that uh, in preparing for this show, I saw some things and heard some things that are funny. I'm telling you, there's some funny things that happened in the filming of this movie. Now, you were on this movie for how long? About six months. And this says it was filmed between 96 and 97. That's right. It's been a few years ago, folks, and uh, we're going to explore that time period that he was there. He played a prominent background character that uh, actually survived the sinking of the Titanic. I did. Well, before we do that, I want to talk about that. Titanic 96, 97, but turn around for a minute. Look at this. This says RMS Titanic 1912. Now, for those of you who may not have remembered or don't know, the Titanic sank the night of uh, April 15th at about 11.45 in the evening. Well, it actually hit the iceberg yeah, at 11.45. Right, right, yeah. It didn't sink at 11.45. No, no. Uh, they experienced that tragedy over the next couple of hours before it actually went to the bottom. But it hit the iceberg at 11.45, uh, and that vessel was not supposed to sink, was it? It was supposed to be unsinkable. The unsinkable. Obviously wasn't. Now, this brings up something very interesting. I don't know how many of you realize that the character unsinkable Molly Brown came from, that, that saying came from this sinking of the Titanic. Molly Brown was on that ship that evening and survived. And uh, you may recall that movie uh, that Debbie Reynolds made. Right. She yeah. played unsinkable Molly Brown. It's a musical, yeah. A musical, right. Now, actuality, uh, on, on the movie Titanic, uh, Kathy Bates played the part. Kathy Bates. She was unsinkable mm -hmm. Molly Brown. Right. And, you know, I've watched that movie several times, and it took me a while to catch that fact and, and look up the background on that, but that's very interesting. And, and the reason she became known as unsinkable Molly Brown, as fate would have it, uh, years uh, before this happened, she was on another ship that went down, and she survived. That's very interesting. Isn't it? Yeah. Now, Terrence, now you survived. How in the world did a guy on this, because we were told all the men were lined up there and going down with the ship. What happened? Well, uh, I was there with my movie wife, and uh, they, we were told to get on the ship. And I don't know why they picked us particularly, but when the first officer, mm -hmm. who was light taller, mm -hmm. was running around with a revolver, taking some on and, and keeping others off, you didn't argue. Well, you played a character. I did some research on the character. His name was Mr. Taylor. Now, uh, let me first of all, before we talk about Mr. Taylor, Terrence, do you swim? You had to bring that up, didn't you? In well, real life, he can't swim, right? About like a rock. 
<laughs> Not that I haven't tried. But. So, hey, they gave him the right character, gave him a cane, he can't swim, lined him up to get in the lifeboat, and here he is. He survived. I'm here. And what did uh, Mr. Taylor, that was your character, that was what my type character. of business was he in, Terrence? Listen uh, to this, folks. Paper products, uh, paper cups, and uh, paper so forth. Paper cups. Now, can you believe that? Here's a guy, gets into a lifeboat, can't swim, really, uh, and in his character, he manufactures paper cups. Now, did that help bail him out? It helped a lot, because I was prepared to bail. I had two <laughs> nice paper cups in my pocket. <laughs> Do you believe I that? Told, believe I told you there's some funny stuff here, right? <laughs> As fate would have it, he plays a guy who manufactures paper cups, gets in a lifeboat, bails it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh you're too much, buddy. I tell you, it's something else. Now, this movie lot that we're about to take you on a tour of, uh, was built down there in Baja, California. Now, Baja, California is really Mexico. It's the peninsula that comes down from San Diego, goes uh, down the coast. Now, the studio was built down, what, south of Rosarita? Yeah, I'm on a mile or two. Mile or two. Uh, and we're going to show you some interesting things down there as well. If, if you're living on the east coast or in central part of the country, you probably have not been out here to the west coast, nor even if you have, you probably didn't see what we're going to show you. So it's going to be a very interesting show, and I think you're, you and your family will get a big kick out of this. Now, Terrence, what is it that you're going to start off showing us today? Well, we're going to show the overall view of the studio. Okay. And we're going to a location that will show that. I don't think you want to leg it up there, but uh, if you want to, but I think you'd prefer to go my way. From what I've seen, it's a fairly large lot. The studio lot's fairly large, and uh, you said something about taking us up on the hill to look at it? I will, but rather than walk you there, I want you to arrive there in one piece, not gasping. Oh, we're going so, to take one of those uh, executive golf carts over here? If we had one, that could be interesting. We don't have one. So All what right. we're going to do is even better. What's that? We're going to use a little movie magic. Okay, I like movie magic. That's what this is all about. All right, uh, pull up your socks, hold on to your whatever, and here we go. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Oh. Well, how'd you <laughs> like that? Hey, now that's the way to get around, folks. I wish you could have experienced that. Uh, Isn't that more fun than a golf course? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, it's more fun than walking up that hill back yeah. here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, take a look at this studio. This is what we wanted to come up here and show you. We're looking down on the lot, and we can see the Pacific Ocean in the background. Of course, that's supposed to represent what, Terrence? The Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean. But who knows, right? Movie magic. Right. Right? Absolutely. Well, what are, what are we looking at here, Terrence? Should I kind of point out some things okay. to us? Well, for instance, they have the lake around the ship. Oh, okay. Now, at this point, you can see the division between the lake and the ocean. Okay, so as you see the Titanic out there, it's sitting in this little mini lake right next to the ocean, right? Right. Now, uh, we won't get into more talk about the lake and, and how it's constructed there later, but... Uh, right now, if you drop the, we, we're down there at eye level, looking across that lake, past the ship, it would look as though we were at sea. You would see no disruption in any way. It's just continuation, it appears, all wow. because of the angle. Yeah. So that's how you know, it looks like in, we're at sea at the ocean. And of course, the, the way we're uh, looking at it right now, they've got the vessel partially uh, sinking. Yeah, they're they're the, testing it, I guess. Yeah, it was in a, in a sinking mode. Right. Um, but uh, when you look at that, look, what we want you to see in this movie Magic is that um, they didn't move the ship. We're going to talk about that later, but it, it stayed right there in that little mini lake, if you will. We're going, to, we're going to go into some detail on this a little later, right? Right. Okay. Now, what, what are we seeing over here in the distance right here on the now, side of the Those lot? are the sound stages. See, there's one right next to the other. Okay. How, how many of them were there? There were two. Two sound stages. Plus uh, assorted shops and various other things where they did effects and so forth around it. Well, you know, I, I don't know if I told you this, but uh, before we got you on this movie and I say, I told you about it and you came down, uh, a group of us came down here and tried to get on the shoot. I uh, went to the casting office, which you'll see in our second episode, by the way. Um, and uh, we didn't get on. Well, some of how us did you more, get on? Because I guess I look more Victorian than you did. Victorian or uh, European, whatever. Okay. Oh, I just I had stage presence. I guess. I guess. <laughs> yeah. 
We, he gets on, doesn't get us on. What can I say? Okay. I try, but they said, I don't want that line. They don't want that ruddy group. <laughs> that, but but sorry, they, they, put, oh, they no. put us in the third class, right? You, and you were part of the first class passenger. I would have been first class, yes. Of course, of course. But of course. But old of chap, course. Old chap. Now, you know, I, I mentioned the fact that we came down here. In fact, I, I remember after we had come down, uh, my group uh, tried to get on. Uh, we came down, Teddy and me and, and uh, Jenny, this uh, friend that you'll briefly see in this little film clip I'm going to show you. We took some home movies and mm -hmm. uh, where did we go? We went down there. What's that little place down there where the lobster is? Uh, Puerto Nuevo. Puerto Nuevo. Uh, we're going to show more of that. That is a great place to go uh, down and eat lobster. And you'll see some of that on the plate. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a screen here and I'm going to show that little clip because you predicted you were going to be on this movie. Yeah, I did, actually. Uh, and you, he's a little bit younger in this movie, but uh, I think you'll get a kick out of just a couple of... Uh, bring up the screen. Here it comes. So here we are, Terrence. What do you think? What do I think? I think we're going to be famous movie actors. We're going to be in the Titanic one way or the other if we have to come down and camp on their doorstep. Yeah, you predicted. Now we go and we have some of that wonderful lobster. Look, look, at, the, look at the food over here. You want some good Mexican yeah. food? You're making me hungry. Oh, I, it still amazes me, Terrence, how they made that uh, Titanic look like it was out there on the Atlantic Ocean. But, you know, it, uh, it was daytime in this shot. Most of the movie uh, was shot in the evening because yeah. that's when this event occurred, as we've already indicated. In the evening and all night. Yeah. It, uh, but this is a spectacular view. I'm glad you brought us up here to take a look at this. It's, it's great. Um, is there, we're going to go down and take a look at the lot uh, close up? We are. Now, uh, how do we get off this hill up here? Well, you can take it on, you know, by foot if you want, or you can do it the way we got here. It's a lot, a lot more fun. I think he's talking about movie magic, folks. Yeah, okay. but you said it, okay? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Hang on. All and right. Wow, that was a that was a good landing. Yep. Where are we, Terrence? We're, I don't see. What, what okay. We? Well, for one thing, you're facing the wrong way. Turn <laughs> oh, this way. Oh my goodness! Do you recognize that? I sure do. That was the stern of the ship. And that was a prominent part of the ending of this movie. It was. That's where Leonardo and Kate both stepped off the stern as the ship went under, along with the cook, who I think was supposed to be about half loaded or drunk <laughs> and they all just stepped off the stern as it went down well, look, 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 look how high up that is i mean uh, that must have been quite a view for the people in the water oh yeah when that thing went up and then came back down and oh, can you imagine being yeah. under that as no. it came crashing down on you when when you watch that in the movie as i'm sure many of you have this is an incredible view i'll tell you that uh, i'm glad you brought us here to see it from this angle they sure did go to a lot of trouble to put these sets together realistically, did they? Yes, no expense or trouble seemed to be uh, too much. Well, there's some other things I'm looking at as we stand here. What are these uh, sets over here? There's some, uh, what are those, flats? Or? Well, over the backs, there's something referred to as flats in uh, movies or even, even stage productions. Uh, they're just fronts. They're painted uh, pictures or uh, facsimiles of buildings, and they usually put them at a distance. In this case, they did. And that showed the buildings that were behind uh, the dock area before they sailed. Now, you mentioned that when they sailed. So the ship was at dockside, obviously, for them to get on the ship. These buildings would have been in, in the, the dockside scenes, right? That's right. So they just shoved them aside, and now they get ready, and they fill that with water? Is that what you're telling me? Well, after they've loaded everyone on, they moved the gantries and the, and the supporting uh, structures, along with all these other scenes, out of the way. Uh-huh. And then filled up the, uh, what they call, I guess, the coffer dam. I guess we'll talk about that more when we get back to the ship. Okay. Well, what's this building up here? I, I see a, like a gantry, is that what that's that is? That's one of the gantries I was just mentioning. Uh, that's how the people came on board ship. That is the first class passengers. Ah, they haven't moved that out yet. So you think no. we'll go up there and take a look at that? If you'd like, sure. Do we, I'm not going to climb up that hill though. Well, I know, I know it's a bit much for you. But uh, 
You want to do it the easy way, you're getting into that <laughs> mode, right? Okay, well, we're going to do it the easy way, so That's hang on to your I'm ready. Whatever. I'm ready. And, I've got uh, my flight suit on. Are, are we ready? ready? I'm ready. Yes, okay. Well, this is the loading dock. This is the gantry. Uh, the whole thing that, uh, that all the first class passengers came on board using this gantry and walked across to the deck of the ship over here. It, it's, it, the, the architecture is so beautiful in that time period, isn't it? Oh, that was very ornate. They did a lot of things. They wanted it to be beautiful and ornate, and just the way that they did things then. And it, it just, they spared no expense, I guess, and, and to make it authentic and attractive and with first class passengers, and they're well, used to the best, so. You must have seen the artisans, the craftsmen down there, and they used a lot of the Mexican people. Uh, to well, make. they did, yes, a lot of them, uh, to do the study. They were working on the set all the time, doing things, changing things, uh, doing whatever had to be done, and not to mention uh, some of my fellow actors were also from Mexico. Well, let's, uh, it, it, what, I, uh, yes. what I am looking at are these windows and, uh, and it was just an elegant way to step aboard such a beautiful vessel. Well, you know, Terrence, uh, this gantry is really quite a, a set in itself. Uh, I'm glad you brought us up here. It's, uh, it's been really interesting. Uh, I wish you could have seen it in person. It's, uh, it's even more elegant than what you're seeing here on the picture. But you know what? I've got to do some movie magic with you. I want to take you up to the top deck, and there's where we're going to sit up there, and we're going to share your experiences as we sit on the top deck of this beautiful uh, Titanic that's above ground from the bottom up. Okay, and how do you propose to magically remove us up there? Well, I thought maybe we climb the stairs and take the gantry across. Well, that's magical. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are we going to, you know, I, I, I have a better way. Okay, what's your the way? The tried and proven way, which is just get us up there and then we can sit down. I mean, I'm getting a little tired running around through all this. All right. I so you're going to put us up there on the top deck? Uh, uh, yes, I am. Okay, well, let's do it. Now, if you want to climb up the stairs, I'll meet you up there. But uh, we'll just do it you my way. You warned me out, Terrence. Do it your way. <laughs> uh, you can, he convinced me. All right. All right. Here we go. Whoa! Wow. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's a good thing this chair didn't go over backwards, Terrence. Uh, that would have been embarrassing for you. Uh, right over the rail here and uh, calling the lifeguards to pluck me out of I the water. I just see you rolling on over the deck. You know. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, that was uh, really enjoyable being out there on the, on the lot and having you show us around out there. But we're going to spend some time here in this beautiful uh, Southern California, Mexico, Baja Peninsula area, uh, talking about how this all came together. James Cameron really did a fantastic job on this movie. Oh, yeah, he did. Uh, and uh, as uh, I mentioned in the lead-in to the show that... Uh, James Cameron uh, and his crew did some fabulous behind the scenes of how he directed it and some of the special effects. But what we're going to show you in this uh, uh, episode is uh, Terrence's viewpoint as a background actor here on the Titanic. Uh, he was a first class passenger. Uh, you worked a lot of nights, didn't you? A lot of nights. You got cold, cold, long nights. <laughs> Un not unlike the Titanic out there. Uh, uh, yeah. In yeah. the Newfoundland area, right? Right. Well, we're talking about the set now. We're talking about that studio in Baja, Mexico, which is on the coast of California, as we said, south of Tijuana, in a town just below a, a town called Rosarita Beach. Now, you stayed down there. They put you up for six months, didn't they? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I had a... Um, apartment right down there next to Puerto Nueva, which is that restaurant town. That serves lobster. Oh yeah, all kinds of food. It's, it's really quite delightful. It was about so seven miles south of uh, Rosarita Beach, well, approximately. knowing Terrence, he probably had a penthouse. He talks him out of, you know, he's a, he's a background uh, featured extra and he probably talked him into a penthouse. Well, it was not the top floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that figures. Uh, and I had a nice view, looking right out of the ocean. <laughs> Great. Well, you, you're, you're something else. The, uh, I, I've worked with this guy on uh, various uh, plays and things, and uh, he, he only gets the best, that's for sure. It's just for chance. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I have stage presence, that's what it is. <laughs> well, let's get back to the subject. Oh, yeah, These people want to know how we made, oh, how yeah. we filmed this there. They filmed <clears throat> this get, thing. Let's get serious about this now, come on. Yeah, let's do it. <clears throat> let's talk about the, the Titanic itself, where we sit here on this wonderful deck uh, in this uh, California uh, Pacific Ocean behind us. By the way, we, they didn't have the Pacific Ocean, did they? No, they had the cold, dark Atlantic. <laughs> Especially dark and cold up around south of Newfoundland. Was yes. The thing what happened. Well, we we were talking about uh, this the the other day when we were planning to get together, and uh, you told me some things, and uh, I found it really fascinating that uh, we were able to keep this vessel that we're on in one place on this studio lot. It didn't go anywhere, did it? No, it went nowhere except down. <laughs> oh yeah, it went down. Uh, no, right. no pun intended. Yeah. Uh, as we sit here talking about that, uh, uh, there's some really interesting pictures that we're showing you that uh, positions that Titanic uh, in this uh, little mini lake we talked about. Mini Lake, yeah, that probably describes it pretty well. I think they were referred to it as a coffer dam. And what's that it mean? Created. It was uh, created with a bunch of uh, walls, you might say, mini walls, like the, what you see on the freeway, those cement K rails, only these are a little bit higher. And they sealed them to the ground and sealed them together, and then they put water in there, and that created a shallow lake, probably about three to four feet deep. And that was out all the way, maybe a couple hundred yards or so, or more, maybe from the sides of the ship and out from the bow. Well, you know, uh, I have, a, uh, I think, a picture up uh, right now that we can show that, uh, in fact, there's a little, uh, what are those little rubber uh, boats that are running oh, around? Oh, yeah, those are called Zodiacs. And what do they use those for? Oh, for moving stuff around. They're taking people back and forth from the boats when we're doing the, the lifeboat scenes. They couldn't be rowing them back and forth to the dock all the time. So they would pick people up and take them back and forth. and whatever they need them for to get around and maybe move something so well he, use them. he's out there running around doing a little wheelie so to speak oh uh, that one scene yeah oh he probably having fun it looked like uh, they had their moments of you know, quality <laughs> <laughs> we'll be talking about some of those comical things that happened in the background oh yeah but the the k rails is kind of an interesting concept because the titanic as he said didn't go anywhere but down uh and yet they took this Titanic and placed it uh, where, you know, we were on that uh, gang, the walkway that led in. The gantries, the, yeah. The gantry that we just visited a moment ago. Mm -hmm. uh, all of that was right there at Dockside. Uh, where did it go, Terrence? Well, <clears throat> what they did, they moved all existing structure and the gantries out of the area and then flooded that dock area by standing the K rails around to where the lake they wanted to be and that's what they did so uh it was all uh done and flooded you know, uh, how deep was that uh, get, uh, the k rails uh well, i should say the the lake itself was, it was three about feet three feet to four feet i think generally it was about supposed to be about four yeah, feet we well, had to be able to float the, the lifeboats and they actually would float in that in that depth oh, of yeah. water? Oh yeah, and if they weren't too overloaded, there weren't too many people in them, you wouldn't have to worry about scraping the bottom or anything. Because mm. the boats would sink about oh, two feet or more, depending on how many people were in them. Now wait a minute, I don't get it here. Now if that's four feet of water, how could they make it look like the Titanic is sinking in four feet of water? Well, <laughs> movie magic. No, no, actually what they did, they created a, a coffer dam. A uh, coffer dam, a very deep one, they called it a well. And it was about, oh, 45 feet deep, right around the ship, maybe extending out 10 or 12 feet from the actual sides of the ship. So from where we're sitting right now on this deck, right out here, next to the ship, mm -hmm. was an area that wasn't four feet deep. It was like 40 to 45 feet deep. Yeah, from the, pretty much from the well, two thirds of the way back, uh, it was deep. And then that was the part that was gonna be sunk I see. And that was on hydraulics, so that the whole front end of the ship set would sink down. And so that part was 45 feet deep. Beyond that, they didn't need it to be 45 feet, so it was 4 feet. Huh. So but, if you were out there uh, in a lifeboat uh, in that 
four feet of water, you wouldn't have to worry about drowning, would you? No, you can get out and wait unless you're really short, and then you'd have to swim. <laughs> now, what the audience may not uh, understand, and I certainly didn't until you told me off camera, is that the ship never moved. It sat static right there in that uh, pool of water, right? It never went forward or backward. It only went down. <laughs> yeah, it did, any. Yeah. So how did they have it sitting there next to the dock and all those cars and wagons? And I think we've got a shot of that right we here. We do have some shots if you want to bring those up. Yeah, let's bring those up and, and show them what it looked like when the ship was sitting there and the people were actually embarking or get, loading the ship, loading it with supplies, uh, and they were getting ready to embark on that journey that didn't go so well. No, <laughs> I didn't, uh, no. <laughs> There's a pun, a pun there somewhere. Let's see, it didn't go so well, it did go into, into the well. well. Okay, yes. that's good. Okay. <laughs> so how did, they, how did they bring in the, where was the dock? I didn't see a dock. Well, once they finished the segment of all of the people loading and all of the preparations and so forth, and they went into the next segment when the ship was at sea, they basically moved the gantry and the related structures and put the coffer dam around that area and they flooded it all and there was about four feet of water over that oh, area where, I got they, it. I where got it. was the where they were loading ah, I the got dock it. area. Yeah, so that was a whole big area that was really streets and railroad uh, rails and all they needed, yeah, before they left the dock it yeah. was, was that scene and then when they when they left then the dock note was no more. They simply moved everything and flooded it, and yeah. there you are. And uh, those sets that they had uh, for the, uh, the gantries or where people, the, the, the walkways that led into yeah. the ship, they just pushed all that stuff away. Yeah, it was done with it, so they no longer needed it. So when you're at sea, you don't need all that. <laughs> <laughs> so there's another shot of the Titanic, I think, from the opposite side of uh, what we're looking at now possibly and and that was where all those girders and all of the superstructure was that held that thing up right uh yeah that was uh, really something because it was literally a forest of girders and all kinds of scaffolding and plus i think at least three elevators they were kind of like freight elevators although they carried actors up and down and various uh all kinds of loads without oh so these weren't hotel the elevators right uh, they weren't even a patch to a hotel <laughs> elevator. No music, just rattle and open and up we went. And then when we were done, we went down. And we were glad that they went up and down without any hitches. So they, when they were filming, they were mainly filming from just one side of the Titanic, right? Mostly. Uh, they did film from both sides, but on the sea side, and here's where we get into the nautical term, uh, which would be the port side, the left side of the ship, as you know, from the bow side, looking back on the left. That side, the way they constructed the set, was uh, open to the ocean, was open to the sea, that, as far as, as built right on the uh, bluff or above where the ocean was on the shore. And that was all open, girders and all that, except where the promenade deck, which was the covered deck, was and then from there on up everything was the finished side it was all finished but so they shot some shots from that point just when they were shooting just that part of the ship from that promenade deck up oh, right and so and on the other side it was fully skinned so which I mean was it had the full uh, the full view, yeah, of, full view of, of the yeah. titanic right yeah. uh-huh yeah. we're talking about the ship itself which was about 90 somewhere between 90 and 100 percent scale it wasn't quite 100 percent was it no. Well, the, and, and we mentioned the fact that they could only shoot from top to bottom on one side of it, which w was the side not facing the ocean. The opposite side, as we mentioned, was uh, the girders, except for the promenade deck, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so picture that, if you will, and I, I'm going to bring up more of those pictures as we're talking about it. But look closely, I'm going to show you something very interesting. All the lettering on those vehicles is backwards. It's all written backwards. And do you know why that is? Tell them, Terrence. So that when they reverse the film, it would be sailing in the right direction. Ah, so it was only facing, it, it was facing in one direction, but it wasn't the direction it was supposed to be going when they left. And so to film it so it would come out right, they had to put it on backwards. So. Otherwise it would look 
odd. Right. Bit backwards. So when they left Liverpool, it was going. The ship was actually going in a different direction than the way it was sitting on this set, right? I know it sounds kind of like a riddle. It's kind of confusing, you know. <laughs> How do you explain that? It just sounds kind of complicated. But. Well, let, let me show a closer shot. We have a shot of a uh, lifeboat, and the and the lifeboats that were along that side of the ship. Mm -hmm. It says Liverpool, but notice, folks, look at this. It's backwards. Yeah. The lettering is backwards. The number is backwards, because they can only shoot from one side of this thing. Essentially, that's about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty much simplifies it. <laughs> and and uh, I, I found that very fascinating uh, that that the, they could pull this off. But you know, uh, we're using green screen as we talk to you tonight in this show, and uh, we're, we're doing some of the same things that they did. In fact, watch this. I'm going to change that lifeboat that where it says Liverpool, and it's backwards. Watch what I do with it. Watch this. Now it's in the right order. See what we did. We do that in editing, we just flip it. So the, the art of filmmaking has a lot of little secrets to it, and that's what we're trying to show you here in this program. Uh, this set uh, only had a couple of rooms uh, on it, the Titanic set. Tell us about that. Well, there was the large area where, we may call it the holding area, where they had the craft service, which uh, for people that don't know, that's a huge, bunch of tables put together with all kinds of snack foods which are available anytime during the shooting during the day or during the night. Oh, by the way, this is the area where the director has a hell of a time getting everybody back onto the set because they've got all kinds of good food, right? Yeah, everybody wants to go in there and have a break. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so when somebody comes in, the first AD runs in there, second AD comes in, he says, okay, we need some people, blah, 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 or we need blah, blah, and everybody's kind of so, going. So they did know, have like craft that, service you know? in that back area up there on the Titanic, right? Yeah, they did. Then, then they had that one one room with, was set up. Uh, it was like a sort of like a kind of nice looking tea room, I guess you could say. Look, look, we had a shot of that. Yeah, yeah. Know. I'll bring that up right now. In fact, there it is now. Uh, in fact, they're they're constructing it here. They're still yeah, working. Yeah, on they're it, still right? working out there. But that was only one of uh, how many things that they had there on the ship itself that yeah. they filmed. And with. you can see that one actually, actually in the film. You can see that room. It's all completed, furnished, and everything. And I think you know, uh, Kate Winslet and Billy Zane did their scene there where he upends the table. He's angry and and all that. That was a tea room shot. I mean, uh, during. The, where he does that, and that was uh, that. Well, the, the other thing that uh, a lot of people don't realize, and we're going to tell you about it, is that very little of the interior shots of the state rooms, the dining room, and things like that, were on this ship, the, the set, as we know, that we're sitting on the top deck of right now. It was not there. Where was it? It was on two sound stages. Wow. And they were quite impressive. And one of them uh, was set up for flooding, and they basically had uh, pumped in uh, seawater, right? They had pumps and pipes, I guess, right from the ocean, and they just pumped in the seawater, and they flooded all that scene with the, the staircase and the, the hallways and the deck, all that, uh, the rooms and everything. That was all on the sound stages, and they just pumped it in. We're going to, in one of the future segments, we're going to talk about uh, the characters and the extras, uh, the background uh, people, and uh, we'll talk about you being there on that staircase. We'll go, we'll go into that. In fact, I think I can show a scene that you're in on that staircase. Yeah, thank God it wasn't when it was sinking. <laughs> oh, they only got one shot at that, didn't oh, they? Oh, yeah, yeah. That, was, uh, that dome was uh, quite extensive. All the shards of uh, glass, whatever it was, came sh showering down. Yeah, that, uh, it was beautiful, though. The staircase was quite, quite beautiful, very impressive. And let me ask you this. Where did you guys eat? Did you eat in the dining room of the uh, Titanic? No, nothing quite so uh, elegant. <laughs> we pretended to there a couple times, but yeah. uh, no, we I mean, actually ate in a, in a great big Tent. It was a, it, like a and, dining and, tent. Yeah, look at this, folks. It's, it's up there right now. See so him standing yeah, outside that tent, and there's another shot of you sitting there. Uh, at the sitting table. inside, yeah, on the table. Yeah. It was a long tent, and they had all the food served at one end. It was, food was quite good, though. I'll have to say the food was very good. What else can you recall about the ship itself that was unique that uh, our audience out there might get a, a charge of? <clears throat> well, during the sinking of the ship. There, uh, inside the deck uh, that was, you might say, inside you couldn't see, 
but the inner deck, uh, most of it forward where people didn't normally didn't go, but you could walk across it, and it was all hidden inside the superstructure and all that bulkheads, and they had this kind of like thick mesh wire, so you could walk on that and walk through, and they would sometimes send us through from side to side. And so wait, that wait, let me let me understand what you're saying. So, uh, in between the two sides of the ship, yeah. Well, they, the bulkheads, the sides the bulkhead, of the ship. Yes, yeah. they had mesh wire that you. Well, it's flooring. Yeah, and yeah. the reason for that it was it was like little holes. It was very heavy, and it, you could actually walk on it. So it was stretched tightly in there, and the reason they did that was that that was the part of the ship that was going to go down in the water, and they had water had to be able to come through. Uh, Otherwise, it would pressure would cause that to break and you couldn't walk on it. Now, originally it was only so far back and uh, that was what part it was going to go down in the water. So what happened at one time, they decided to sink it further and so they sank it down and the water's rushing into these areas that there is no place for it to, to go through and so it builds up pressure and it starts to push out the bulkheads and you could hear the sound of some splintering starting and everything, and the bulkheads started to, to give way. I was standing right next to one. Oh, that must have been exciting. Yeah, that was... Well, they caught on to it right away because there was like <laughs> ADs all over the place, you know, and so they watched for everything, and so they Baja's caught on Baja's having an earthquake. No, yeah. yeah, they stopped that right now, but yeah. it was an exciting moment, should we say. Now, Terrence, uh, we talked about the fact that the majority of the movie uh, was shot in uh, Rosarito Beach in Baja, California, which by any other name is Mexico. Huh. Was there any other part of Mexico where they did any shooting? Yeah, they did a whole sequence about uh, the, the Carpathia, and that was done in the Bay of Nantes. Well, let, let's remind people that the Carpathia was the ship that rescued uh, the people that were in those lifeboats. Right, right. Yeah, the they came close, uh, their closest boat, and uh, they came in and picked up the people in the boats, and the lifeboats. Anyway, that whole scene was shot down in the bay in Ensenada, right off outside of the uh, marina there, where they have a lot of uh, yachts and boats. And uh, what they did was they trailered down and bussed down. A lot of us, they trailered the boats down and launched the boats into the bay there. They had a camera barge anchored out in the bay and they had all of us, about four boats, I think it was, and we were all, a bunch of us in there rowing these things. Oh, this must and, have been exciting. Uh, let me tell you, it got to be all exciting at one point because they had 11-foot swells at one point, and we were up against, they wanted this to come in right up by the barge and then push off, and we're all in there with these 10-foot oars and these great big <laughs> lifeboats, and people are flailing around and trying to Background pull Background actors that are not sailors or know how to use oars, right? Well, I fortunately had done some rowing, so I didn't have a problem. Like I could row. And our boat, very fortunately, was several people that had done some rowing. And so we did pretty well, but some of the boats had a, had a rough time. And it was a little touch and go when these waves are coming in and these swells and trying to ram you into the barge, you know. But we managed to survive that and uh, not have any miniature versions of the sinking of the Titanic. So uh, <laughs> we uh, rode in and out and in and out and in and out. And then we were all trailered and bussed back. As it turned out, interesting, uh, the cam uh, the something was wrong with the cameras and the film was spoiled. Oh so gosh. they didn't like it. And so in a couple of weeks, we all went back down again and did the whole thing all over again. Well, by this time, you probably had the rowing down pretty good. Oh, I was pretty good at rowing by then, and so was our boat. And I think the second AD uh, was in the boat with us, and... Uh, yeah, but who, who was the second AD? I was trying to remember her name, Bo, Bo something. Well, uh, the first AD uh, was uh, Josh, right? Josh McLaughlin, yeah. Was he down there? Uh, I don't think he went to that one, no. Uh -huh. No, that was not, but, but she was kind of uh, there, and of course the second unit was down there, camera on the camera barge. Anyway, uh, so we did our rowing for the most of the day down there, and then by the time to finish, we were feeling pretty good about our rowing, because we seemed to be very <laughs> proficient in our boat, so the boat decides... Uh, let's let's uh, not be towed back by the Zodiac boats, which is these little inflatable uh, boats with the outboarders on them and everything. And so 
Let's roll back and we'll, we'll race anybody who wants to race. Even despite the fact we were wearing all of that complicated, heavy, layered Victorian clothing, we were pretty good at the rowing. And these are 10 foot oars and when they're great big lifeboats that are about 15 feet long, roughly maybe, they're, they're pretty good sized boats. Uh, nobody else wanted to, wanted to do that. But we said, okay, we'll race you if you're being towed by a Zodiac. We'll race you, we'll, we'll, we'll pull the oars and we'll, we'll race you back. We'll row back and we'll beat you. And you know, we got back to the, to, the, uh, to the docks just about the time that they got there. We said, we actually technically beat them. I can't imagine so, you rowing a boat, Terrence. Well, in, 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 in a uh, Victorian suit with high button <laughs> shoes and an old top coat and the whole thing, yeah. Now, yeah, Cuddy wrapped that one around. Now, you were shooting this in the daytime, but those boats, this was happening in the evening. Yeah, I know. Late evening. I mean, this was well, after midnight. Camera magic, what can I say? <laughs> the scenes that uh, I found really fascinating were the scenes of those lifeboats uh, being launched up there on uh, the Titanic where we sit right now. Uh, okay. Tell us about that. That must have been pretty interesting. Yeah, there was one thing that happened one time. One oh, we want to hear about that, don't we? Yeah, we had been uh, just uh, launched and uh, lowered from the, off the davits, which is what lowers them down, into the water in that 45 degree, or I should say 45 foot well of water right by the ship. So as we're unhitching the davits and the cables and everything and trying to unslip these oars, which are 10 feet long, not light, and a bunch of people didn't really have much experience doing this, and they were laid along the center of the, of the lifeboat. Yeah, you know, Terrence, let, let me bring up a picture of one of those lifeboats uh, being launched. You can see the, uh, show them the, the oh, oars. Yeah. You see, we're looking down kind of at that, and you can see all those, the oars along the center, and right in the very center is a long piece of wood. It's actually a sail, a small furled sail. And so that is there with the oars. So it was all kind of wrapped up together. So you had know, people who are not used to doing this, trying to untangle all of this stuff. They get these oars up and out 10 feet long into these oar locks, which are the little metal U-shaped pieces that go into the side of a boat when you're gonna row it, for those of you who don't know. Uh, and we're trying to do some people don't know what they're doing, a lot of them. <laughs> and during, to make it even more complicated, uh, we had, of course, Josh McLaughlin, which was the first AD in the boat, in disguise, with a radio, talking to James Cameron, who was up on a camera platform, hovering above all of this, taking uh, uh, this in. Let me, let me show one of those camera platforms. Uh, they used uh, high cranes with platform hanging off of it. and. Uh, uh, the camera crew was up there uh, dangling from that, shooting these scenes. Yeah, it was uh, yeah, very uh, it's, uh, terrorist. It's pre yeah, pretty interesting, huh? Yeah, you can see them up there. See that camera camera up there? It's yeah. It, none of them fell off during the shooting, did they? Not to my knowledge, no. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, you were saying that... Well, anyway, so he's up there and Josh is trying to communicate with Mr. Cameron what they're going to do and how they're going to shoot this scene with this one lifeboat. So people are trying to unslip these oars and we're all wearing these clumsy, heavy Victorian clothing. And during this process, we're right next to the boat, or the ship, I should say. Mm -hmm. And we somehow get backed up to this big bilge pump that was coming out in water about so big around, big stream of it. And uh, they start filling up the boat. They got everybody in that into so the boat. So wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you guys are coming down in this lifeboat, we and you down. come by <laughs> this big pipe to shooting water out at well, you? Well, actually, we had already were in the well, the right. water, and we had disengaged from the, the uh, cables and so forth, and trying to get this thing out and away from the side of the ship by getting these oars loose. And people who were having a terrible time trying to untangle that, and in the middle of that, we got drifted up in, under this bilge pump. So that's <laughs> pumping water all over about four or five people getting soaked literally in like in a waterfall. So what you're saying is you, you guys were right there under this big pipe shooting water out, right? Yeah, they call it a bilge pump and it was round and it put out a lot of water and it was going <laughs> right in, it was, well, we backed right under, under it, when it when it was putting out a maximum amount of water. And the oars are flailing all over the place and Josh is, uh, the boat is filling up and uh, fast with water. He's down in the bow of the boat. 
the skies trying to talk and coordinate the boat with Cameron who's up Cameron on the taking pictures right and everybody down here is having a terrible time with the oars so uh, the thing got start, started to get filling up and Josh is down there and the friend that, that, that was of uh, mine well the guy the guys on the picture is right there and he loses his balance in all this water and he falls over on top of Josh he can't and Josh is saying, get off of me, you know. And <laughs> Cameron's saying, are you there, are you and, there? And they're trying to talk yeah. through this, and uh, we're trying to get pushed away from the side of the boat. Finally managed to do that. A couple of guys uh, that were near the, the rear of the boat where they could actually get at the boat, managed to push away from the thing. Meanwhile, it was like, good grief. We had uh, Zodiac boats coming over with uh, you know, siphon pumps to on you might say take the water out so right. we wouldn't sink and they were saying right hey, you guys could sink you know so but it wasn't you know when it, they wouldn't let that happen of course they were over there <laughs> right on top of it but the whole thing implied you know that we were <laughs> well I, i've got to ask you wet. something now I, I i joked at the beginning of this episode about the fact that you can't swim in real life right yeah, but i came uh, close to learning <laughs> <laughs> I bet you did. 45 feet of water, the boat's sinking, really. Wearing the stuff I had to wear in a, a top coat that when wet must have weighed about 50 pounds. <laughs> so here so your costume's getting drenched. So oh, yeah. I, well, for retakes, what did they do? They put you in a dry costume or did you well, say the heck with it? We got that shot and then they took us over to the outer edge of the coffer dam. To a, there was a large tent over there they had set up to kind of it was very very warm and they would get us in there kind of cool warm us up actually and try to dry out some of the clothing but then back into the boat and back again you know do, do it all over again well as i say you, you're playing the character uh who was really one of the men and and of course your uh, movie wife uh yeah what was your name again elmer zebley taylor Oh, Elmer Zebley Taylor. Well, nice Victorian name. Well, by chances as it would have it, uh, what was your uh, job? Or you owned a company, right? Well, he was the owner of a paper company, paper uh -huh. products. And uh, you know, we're joking before about, to me about what, too bad we didn't have paper cups and they could <laughs> bailed out. Uh, well, maybe in that lifeboat scene, Paper cups wouldn't have been enough. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, oh man. <laughs> yeah. No, if they had to bring a boat over to uh, pump the water out, I would uh, say not. Zodiacs came over with those siphons, those pumps, and right. started trying to pump us out so we didn't go down. Well, and the other thing, ladies and gentlemen, that I want you to see, watch the movie again. Watch the scenes and pay attention to the background actors. And you're going to see Terrence lined up there like number one to get in the lifeboats. Now, Terrence. They had said, and there was an officer standing there trying to keep the men back because the women and children were supposed to be in those lifeboats. And so here you are getting in the lifeboat. What's this all about? Well, basically I was there saying goodbye to my <laughs> movie wife because I figured, okay, I guess it's bye-bye forever. Yeah, right. And, uh, of course, the first officers, there was a couple of them running around and they were armed. <laughs> And uh, I think it was Lightoller and Murdoch and somebody else. And anyway, they were kind of trying to keep things under control because people were panicking. So I'm standing there with my, with my movie wife saying goodbye. And they decided that we were both going to get in the boat. She said, get in the boat. So, uh, so I'm going to say, well, oh, no, I'd rather drown. So I got in the boat. Jumping ahead of all of these women and children to get in that lifeboat. Well, I didn't really jump ahead. I was actually told by one of the ship's officers to get in the boat. <laughs> well, you you look at the argue? Well, you look at the movie, and they're sitting there with a gun in his hand saying, don't you dare get in that boat. You're a man. Let the no. women and children in. He was telling me to get in the boat. Meanwhile, here's DiCaprio and Kate Winslet running around trying to find a boat. In fact, she got out of one of the boats. She did. That was her choice. And uh, so they're trying to find a boat to get into, and you probably had their seat, Terrence. Uh, I don't know. That kind of like casting me is, is the heavy there. I, I just follow the guy with the gun and points at you and says, get in the boat, you get in the boat. This is movie making. You know darn well they didn't have bullets in those guns. They had blanks. You have been shot with a blank? <laughs> you know, that hurts. Anyway, they, uh, for, the, for the sake of the movie, they told people uh, who they wanted to get on the boat and who they didn't. Uh -huh. And I would just stand there saying goodbye to her and he says, get on the boat. So uh, I said, okay. okay, I'm not going to argue. I don't know if you're going to buy that. I'm certainly not buying that story. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs>